My name is Alex Storch and I'm an Ansible specialist. I'm going to walk through how I can use Crunchy Data to provide a highly available Postgres database and manage some of the replication and backup capabilities. So why am I looking at a Crunchy Postgres database? So as you may be aware, all of the Ansible Automation Platform components leverage a Postgres database in the back end. And myself, I'm not a database expert and Red Hat also is not necessarily a database expert. So it helps to have that partnership to help if I need an HA or DR solution specifically around that database. So Crunchy can specifically provide that HA database across a single cluster, a multi data center cluster across multiple regions, whatever your setup looks like. Can also handle that data replication between those instances and even help with the failover management itself, including some of the self-healing to make sure if I lose one of the databases, I can actually restore that so I don't have to do any manual work in between to restore a database that was down or handle any of the actual failover processes. All of that's handled by Crunchy Data, and they do also provide an SLA to ensure that the setup is maintained and I've got someone to call if I run into any sort of issues that is specifically an expert in this particular process. So for myself, I will deploy a Postgres database. This is all going to be inside OpenShift leveraging the Crunchy Data Operator. So I'll be deploying two instances in a single data center. I will leverage PG Backrest to handle the backup portion. So it'll handle full incremental differential backups depending on how you have it set up. And then Petroni will actually handle that stream replication. So this ensures that if I destroy a single database node, Obviously, it'll handle that streaming between the two. And if I happen to delete both of those database instances, I can wait for the backup to restore and we'll see how all that plays out as I go through this process. From a diagram standpoint, obviously this is much more than I'm actually going to deploy, or this shows how all these different pieces can tie together. If the automation platform, I can essentially just point to that front end and let Crunchy handle the rest. So I don't need to necessarily worry about all this back end of setting up PG backrest, the individual database instances. Obviously, I will need to make sure I have the persistent volume claims available and all that set up inside, in my case, my OpenShift cluster. But this does give you that capability to see how all this can tie together, depending on what your environment setup is. So I have an Ansible Automation Platform environment set up inside OpenShift with a whole bunch of jobs. And I'll walk through the process of standing up that Crunchy database and migrating it into my existing platform. So for this demonstration, I'm actually going to use an existing automation platform cluster with an existing Postgres database running. So obviously I can eliminate some of the steps if I don't need to migrate over data, but this would be very useful if I already have an automation platform running with job templates, credentials, all those pieces, and I do need to migrate that into the new HA solution provided by Crunchy. So I'm going to log into this automation platform, which I've got set up with my IDM credentials. And as you can see, I already have a number of job templates credentials that I definitely want to save as I migrate this into the new solution. So it's important for me to be able to easily migrate that data over in a pretty quick and seamless fashion. So I'm going to go into Operator Hub and actually install the Crunchy Data Operator since that's going to be key for this all to work. This will handle all the individual pieces of you know, actually installing the, the database itself, setting up the two clusters, making sure PG backrests and Petronia are set up with a very simple YAML definition. So once this finishes, it'll let me know that it's done and I'll be able to basically paste in a definition that will define how I want this to work. As I talked about before, I'm going to be leveraging two replicas. I'm also going to be using PG backrest as well as Petroni to handle that replication. I could set up additional replicas and I could also work behind the scenes to make sure each individual database is running on a separate worker node inside my OpenShift cluster, but that's kind of outside the scope of what I'm going to show here. So I'm gonna jump into the operator and that it's finished being installed and I'm gonna stand up a new instance because that's kind of the key for what we're doing here. So I'll switch to the YAML view and just paste in an existing YAML file. And I'll talk a little bit through what I'm doing here. So I've given a name AAP cluster and I am installing it into my existing AAP namespace. That way I don't have to worry about connectivity between namespaces or any sort of rights that are needed. I am installing a newer version of Postgres. So with a user provided database, I can go to the same version, which is 13, or I can go to any newer version of Postgres and it will work with the automation platform. And then I'm spinning up in this case, two replicas with the automation controller database. I'm setting up that PG backrest to handle both full and incremental backups. Again, I'm not a database expert, so I won't dive into the, the depths of that. And then I'm also setting up Petroni as well to handle those pieces. So I'm gonna click create and that will go through the process of actually setting up those 
uh, two databases, setting up the service and everything to handle it. So I'll be fully ready to go to actually handle this process. So because I do have an existing automation platform, before I make any changes to this based on the databases that are being spun up, I do want to shut this down first before I go into kind of the bigger process of migrating over the data and mig migrating over the secrets. So in my case, I'm just leveraging the command prompt within OpenShift, but you could use really anything that has OC commands available for it and connection and credentials for your um, OpenShift cluster. So I'm gonna switch into that AAP project, and then I'm gonna start going through the process of essentially spinning down automation controller. So I'm gonna set the spec to be zero so there won't be any replicas of it, and then I'm gonna ensure that the task and web containers themselves are also set to be zero. So I don't have to worry about any issue with those running as I try to go through this process. So that'll ensure that the automation platform itself is completely spun down, has no access, and I can verify that by refreshing my page, and you'll see that the application isn't available anymore. And as I look in here, I can see that my databases are actually spun up, so I know this is ready to go for that process. So I'll switch back to my terminal. Next, what I need to do is I need to actually patch the Postgres database so that it can connect successfully to my existing database. So what I'm first going to do is I'm gonna patch the new database that I spun up, that AAP cluster database, and I'm going to basically take the secret from the existing AAP controller database and essentially patch that into it. So we'll have the same secret between the two. And then I also need to update the AAP configuration itself to point to that Postgres database managed by Crunchy. So in this particular command, I'm basically getting the exact host information for that new AAP cluster by Crunchy and setting that as the new host for my Postgres configuration for AAP. So with this done, I've now essentially set up the same secret between the two, so the old database and the new cluster, and I've also patched my existing AAP environment to point to that new Crunchy database cluster. The next big step is obviously migrating over that data since that will make this process much easier so I don't have to redo everything from scratch. This is surprisingly quick considering I had you know 200 plus job templates and everything, but this is essentially copying over all of the tables, so essentially doing a PG dump and copying it into the new environment. So everything as of now should be copied over and obviously you can adjust this and I'll paste the commands in the description down below. So you may just have to modify for your AAP cluster name, your databases if you've got controller, hub, and event-driven Ansible, and obviously adjust for your PG database names as well. So because this is all done, I don't really need the existing database anymore. I can delete the current database. So I'm gonna delete the AP controller Postgres 13 database, and I'm gonna delete the persistent volume claim because I don't need that either. And the next big step is, well, I need to actually start back up automation controller. So I can see that the tasks and the web interface are working successfully and that they actually have access to that new database that's running. So jumping back into the topology view, I can see that in my AAP operator itself, I no longer have that Postgres database. It's been destroyed, but I do have, based on Crunchy, I do have the two Crunchy database nodes that are up and running, so they are doing that streaming replication. I do have the full and incremental backup set up. I do have the actual backup itself set up and running, and I do have the overall repo host that's handling all that backup and streaming replication. So all of this is up and running, and I should now be able to log back into the automation platform as my user. And since this is an existing environment, I should still be able to use my IDM credentials. And once I log in, you can see that I do have all hosts, inventories, projects, all that copied over. So this was a very easy way to switch from an existing cluster into a cluster with Crunchy Data to manage that HA and DR process. Again, I am not a database expert, so I don't necessarily have the capability to maintain this across multiple environments. If I got a DR cluster in another region, that's something I would certainly need to get additional expertise for, but this at least gives me the capability of if one database node is destroyed for whatever reason, I can pretty easily maintain because the Postgres operator is maintaining that capability. So. As you can see, I do have these two clusters up and running. I'm actually just gonna destroy one of the nodes. So let's start with this one just to see what happens from an operational standpoint. I'm just gonna delete it. And I can see successfully that you know it's gone and it will already automatically start it back up. But as I do this, everything still continues to operate. So no, no impact upon my end system while I went through this. So because of how Crunchy works, it does automatically handle that spin up process. So it'll take a little bit as it spins back up but it's already running and ready to go. So without any additional work by myself, it did handle that healing process, handled restoring all the data, so everything is back up and running and ready to go. 
What if I destroy both? So since I've got a two node cluster in this case of the database, what happens if I destroy both? So I am going to destroy that cluster once again, but this time destroying both. And you'll see within the topology view that they are both gone. So I would expect some impact. So obviously I can't see anything because the ability to retrieve this information from the database has been lost. But because of how this handles, A, it's spinning these back up and it will be restoring the data from the backups that have been taken. So I'll be able to immediately continue to run as it goes through this process. So I can see the database is up and running and it's gonna finish up with that one as well. So I should be able to start getting this data again as it slowly starts establishing that connection and as the data starts getting restored. So without actually doing any work from my side to restore these databases, the operator handled the entire aspect of spinning up the crunchy database itself and restoring from the existing backups that have been taken with PG backrest. So definitely a much easier way to maintain that high availability of my crunchy databases and the Postgres itself without necessarily being a Postgres expert. So definitely something to think about if you wanna streamline this process. While all of this is obviously done in this case inside OpenShift, there are capabilities to do this on traditional virtual machine install as well, but this is significantly easier for me to get off and running since it's very easy to translate OC commands into actually migrating the database and the PG operator makes this much easier to actually get up and running and handle that replication and backup as you see here today. So this, hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea of how I can take an existing database, in this case in OpenShift, and migrate it to the really the managed offering by Crunchy database with the, the operator inside OpenShift. While there is a capability to do this from a VM-based install, it was certainly much easier to do this with inside OpenShift. If I have an existing VM install, I can migrate that. There's a supported path to go from a VM-based install into OpenShift, and then I can do this follow-on process to migrate from an OpenShift-based install into the Crunchy HA database with this offering. So it gives you a ton of capability to take maybe where you are with a single VM and a single database, all the way through an HA and DR solution which, with Crunchy as the management for your Postgres database. So start thinking about how you may need additional resiliency. I will personally admit I have not run into database issues, but having something, especially if this is a mission critical application, or I know that I'm running a lot of automation and they may be putting a lot of demand on my database, this self healing capability and the ability to have that data automatically replicated can certainly provide a lot of peace of mind, especially for someone like me who really is not a database or specifically a Postgres database expert. So thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit more about how I can use the Postgres operator to provide that backend Postgres database for the Ansible automation platform. Thank you. Click my picture on the right to subscribe or click the image on the left to watch another video.